Apple's new 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro is faster, has beefed up graphics, and a completely redesigned trackpad. So let's check out if it's worth picking up. So what's up guys, Jonathan here with TLD, and this is my review of Apple's 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now I'll get you a look at comparisons versus last year's model, this year's i5 versus i7, and that includes video editing, gaming, speed test, and more. But let's start with something that is completely new for 2015, and that is the Force Touch trackpad. It's a trip, but with this trackpad, you aren't actually clicking anything. Below the trackpad is a taptic engine, which creates a haptic click back at you, which makes it feel like you're clicking. To really understand what I'm saying, if you own one or can check one out in store, shut the MacBook Pro down and then try clicking. Since it's software controlled, you can adjust it from light to medium to firm depending on your preference. And I was always a tap to click kind of guy, but now really enjoy clicking on this new trackpad. It's strange, yet satisfying. It takes a little getting used to at first, but once you do, you can really tell the difference compared to last year's model. Again, since it's hardware and software controlled, you get even consistent clicks at any point on the trackpad. Conversely, on a non-force touch trackpad, the money clicks happen right in the middle and then closest towards you. You move all the way towards the top of that trackpad and the click game suddenly isn't so hot. On top of that, you can then push down to engage a force touch. The sensors gauge how much pressure is being applied and then from there, gain more control over your Mac. If you force click a file on your desktop, you can then quickly preview it. In QuickTime, when you're playing a video, the deeper you press, the faster it fast forwards or the faster it rewinds. And lastly, if you're reading text, you can force click that text to get more info on it. Now design wise, aside from the trackpad, this year's model looks exactly like last year's and it isn't sacrificing anything like the new 12 inch MacBook. It's equipped with a MagSafe 2 connection, twin Thunderbolt 2 ports, USB 3, a headphone jack and dual mics on one side and on the other an SDXC card reader, HDMI and the second USB 3.0 port. The display is also the same, but it's beautiful. It sizes in at 13.3 inches and rocks a resolution of 2560 by 1600. And before that guy out there shouts through his keyboard, there's no point of anything past 1080p on a notebook display. Worst laptop ever. Calm yourself, Timmy, this is how it works. By default, with the 2560 by 1600 resolution, you're getting a screen real estate that looks like 1280 by 800, but since there's twice the pixels vertically and horizontally, you're really getting four pixels for each pixel of real estate which results in a super sharp and oh so crispy image. What's sweet though is that in apps that support retina scaling, it won't scale things like video. So in Final Cut Pro 10, for example, I can have a full 1080p window playing at a one to one pixel ratio and the text and UI elements come in at four to one. You can also adjust it system wide if you need more screen real estate. So it looks like 1440 by 900 or up to 1680 by 1050, which is usually what I have mine set to. So obviously it's a newer MacBook, it's gonna be faster, but how much faster? For testing, I busted through three versions, last year's 2.6 gigahertz i5, this year's 2.7 gigahertz i5, and also this year's 3.1 gigahertz core i7 model. In Geekbench 3, they were pretty evenly stacked up and there really wasn't a huge difference across the three. Multicore, there was a little bit bigger of a difference, but again, nothing crazy, especially even comparing this year's i5 all the way up to the i7. Next up is Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, and this is gonna test how fast the flash storage inside the MacBook Pro is. The 2014 model was just about 500 megabytes per second on the right side and just around 675 megabytes per second on the read speed. And keep in mind, this is the 128 gigabyte model. The 2015 i5 model, which has 256 gigs of flash storage, was much faster. Nearly 1200 megabytes per second on the right side and almost 1300 megabytes per second on the read side. Do note though, if you're testing this out and you see slower speed, it's more than likely because you have the smaller 128 gigabyte model that is perfectly normal and nothing to freak out about. Lastly, this year's i7 model, which is packing 512 gigs of flash storage, that was 1400 megabytes per second on the right side and 1350 on the read. So really, really fast. So numbers and benchmarks are cool, but what does it actually mean? I thought it'd be cool to give you guys a behind the scenes look at shooting a video and then editing it on the MacBook Pro. And I got to hang out with Kevin, AKA Fit Men Cook, who is absolutely killing it on Instagram. So we shot an entire video for his channel. And if you're drooling over that food, I'll have a link to his video down below. But what I did from there was take it to my MacBook Pro, lay the chop down, and then from there, copy this project to the two other MacBook Pros so I can see how fast each of them exported this video. And the final cut ended up being around three minutes, 1080p imported from my FS7. The 2014 i5 MacBook Pro dished it out in one minute, 10 seconds. The 2015 i5 MacBook Pro did the same thing in a minute and five seconds. And finally, the 3.1 gigahertz i7 MacBook Pro did the exact same thing in one minute flat. 
Now I also created my own TLD Final Cut Pro 10 benchmark, which you can download and try it out for yourself. This involves a little more rendering and text elements and the 2014 MacBook Pro, the i5, did this in one minute, 29 seconds. The 2015 i5 MacBook Pro was only a couple seconds faster and where we saw the biggest difference was on the 3.1 gigahertz i7 2015 MacBook Pro. Real quickly, the Photoshop test I ran, the 2014 and the 2015 i5 were pretty much identical. And again, we saw a bigger difference with the i7 2015 model. Now, as far as a real quick gaming test, just to see how much better the integrated graphics on this year's model are compared to last year's, I went ahead and ran Tomb Raider. Last year's MacBook Pro was just under 12 average frames per second, while this year's jumped up to just under 17, so definitely a little bump there. And as far as this year's i5 versus i7 in terms of gaming for this test, there really wasn't a big difference, not even a full frame per second. Lastly, in Cinebench R15, you can see these benchmarks line up pretty much identically to every other benchmark I've run so far. The 2015 MacBook Pro, whether it's the i5 or i7, has a pretty nice bump in the graphics department, and a decent but not great bump in the CPU department. Aside from that, regarding battery life, Apple's gonna claim you're gonna get 10 hours out of this machine, which may be true, you might push 10, but realistically eight to nine if you're doing light things like web browsing. But if you're really going heavy and using Final Cut Pro 10, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, you can probably realistically expect to get somewhere in the five to six hour range. I didn't really notice too much of a battery dip on the i7 versus the i5, but what I did notice is that the fans on the i7 kicked up a lot more and a lot easier than the i5, which kind of was annoying to me. Overall, bang for buck, I really don't see a whole ton of value going for the i7. If you're looking for sheer power, I would actually put that extra money towards a 15 inch model, which is actually gonna get you a quad core model versus dual core and possibly even dedicated graphics as opposed to integrated depending on the model you pick up. Overall, I think the Force Touch trackpad is solid and I really enjoy it, but I don't think it's necessarily something that you're gonna have to go run out and sell your 2014 MacBook Pro and it's gonna make you have to buy this. If you're rocking something from 2013 or prior, then yeah, it's gonna be a really nice jump and I would totally recommend it. But again, unless you go in that Apple store and you really, really, really love that Force Touch trackpad, then I would probably hold off until 2016. Aside from that, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did and you are feeling like being awesome, make sure to go Chuck Norris on that like button and in return, get a virtual high five at your face. If you have any questions or need buying advice on these new MacBook Pros, drop me a line or actually the best way to get a hold of me is on Twitter at TLD today. Pricing, availability, everything you could possibly need to know is linked down below. This is Jonathan with TLD and I'll see you guys later.